Let's go to exactly what I talked to Jay Johnson about yesterday, yeah. this, particularly this possible national emergent de declaration. Would Congress, do you think, take away the power of effect they used it for this purpose? Well, that definitely is a, is a valid point that he makes. You know, you cry wolf so many times and pretty soon uh, the, the help's not coming to protect you from the wolf. So, yeah, they would look at that very strongly, I believe. But with that, it'll be fought out in courts. I think whatever happens right now, we've got 800,000 people on Thursday, 800,000 government workers who won't be getting a paycheck. But more than that, Dave, we have hundreds of thousands of children who won't be getting food. And this is unbelievable that we're going down this path because we become uh, to an impasse. And I said the best way forward on this, I told the president, and I would tell everybody listening, is that let's have a vote. Let us vote on immigration reform, which gives 40 some billion dollars to really secure our borders and get rid of the people that came for the wrong reason and got here the wrong way and give pathway to people that came here for the right reason and want to be productive for our country. But this is something could be done. And it is, we did it in uh, 2013. 68 Democrats and Republicans voted in favor of it. It basically nobody could get any citizenship whatsoever until the borders were totally secured. That's port of entries. That's more agents. Uh, that's drones and technology. That's more sensors. Uh, it really protects us. So, so uh, Senator, uh, you have been known to have a pretty good relationship with the president, maybe one of the best for a Democrat, frankly, up <laughs> on Capitol Hill. Yeah. Uh, when you raise that with the administration, with the president of the United States, is there openness to making this a bigger deal rather than a smaller deal and getting past it? I, I would think, my, my uh, heart of hearts would think that, yes, he would like to do a better deal, a bigger deal. I think he really, truly uh, would like the, uh, uh, the overall immigration reform bill that we did in 2013. It's just a hard base he has, the hard right. They don't, I mean, they don't care how you got here, for what reason you came. If you didn't come here through legal channels, uh, you're, that's amnesty if you get to stay any way, shape, or form. Even if you work your way through, even if you get in the back of the line, never committed a crime, got educated, contributed to our community and our society, paid your taxes, and become a great American, and your children were, were serving in military. They just didn't care. And, I think the president would step out of that. If he can, I think he'd be bold, but to get what he needs, and he wants border security, I'm for border security. I voted for it before, I'll vote for it again. But basically right now, there has to be a fix to the immigration problem that we have. It's going to continue to reoccur, reoccur, and reoccur if you don't fix it. This will be a reoccurring problem. So when you talk about the president's base, and there's a lot of talk about uh, the base and his concern for the base. Is this an issue about getting reelected in 2020 or is it an issue up on ca uh, Capitol Hill? Because uh, the House is Democrat at this point. The Democrats probably would go for an overall immigration bill. He's got a bigger majority in the Senate. Does he have the support on Capitol Hill put aside 2020 and reelection? Well, I think that people, I mean, I would like to think that my Republican colleagues and friends would look at it. Do we fix a major problem we have? This problem goes back not just to a Republican or a Democrat uh, president or legislative uh, majority here in, in, in Washington. This goes back many, many decades. No one's been able to fix that because we haven't taken a real tough look at what the problem is. We, uh, we have people here that aren't going to be rounded up and sent out. And with that, everybody's just kind of letting, letting it go. And uh, we need to have some, uh, some finality to this and move forward. Uh, the Dreamers, the DACA, that's, that's a way forward if he would look at that. I think Mr. President has been sympathetic towards the DACA and Dreamers. They came here, no fault of their own. Don't blame them. They've been productive. They've got educated. They serve in the military. Give them a chance to really enjoy the full citizenship of this country. That's all we've asked for. But the other one, as far as the full immigration reform that we did in 2013, put over $40 billion to secure our borders. So if you get put rid of the people that came for the wrong reason, committing crime, and have been absolutely a detriment to our society, get them out and make sure they don't get back in. And you have to have a secure border to do that. So Senator, talk to us about the people. Uh, you're from West Virginia. You were governor there before yeah. you were senator. You know the people of West Virginia. Absolutely. It's generally thought there's a fair amount of that base we're talking about for President Trump who live in West Virginia. If you talk <laughs> to people in West Virginia right now, are they more concerned about people coming across that southern border or are they more concerned about getting the government back up and running again for some of the reasons you identify? Well, first of all, West Virginia has, uh, President Trump has the strongest support percentage-wise in our state than any other state in the nation. He won West Virginia by almost 43 percentage points. And he's been carrying a close to a 60% approval. So that's a good bellwether. 
what's going to happen? I think he's going to be testing the patience of these people and the support they have when their children, when the food stamps stop, when the basic things that they've been counting on for support of necessities of life, when those start being hindered and cut back, that's when people are going to start saying, wait a minute, this is personal now. Immigration has not been a big issue in West Virginia because we're insulated and we don't have a lot of migrants into our state. But we do have a lot of people that depend on the H-2B visas. They need H-2Bs to run, whether it's their landscaping businesses or whether it's so much of the, of the farming and, and general things that we need good hard workers to do. And these people have been very productive and they've been able to do something in a very civil and a very law-abiding way. Now they're being uh, detrimental to the survival of their business. They're, they're threatened. So people are starting to speak out that have truly been his loyal supporters. So we'll see where this goes, but I think it'll be very harmful.